all common sense. Oh, d did I let that out? Sorry. Um, now, uh, I've noticed that people traditionally have a slide on the author. Um, a lot of you know me, but some of you don't. I was hoping there'd be a whole bunch of people hiring in the audience because, uh, frankly, I'm going to need a job in a few uh, months because of the same reason that everybody else and all the other companies needs a job now. Um, but it turns out that they cleverly scheduled the jobs boff to coincide with my talk. So uh, the, um, oh, I'm sorry, give me a moment. I'm actually looking at the wrong presentation. Yes, I, I knew something else could go wrong. It's been one of those days. Starting with me forgetting to bring my actual uh, remote mouse thingy. Okay. Dum -dum -dum. So here's a job ad. Um, I will take the commercial approach and intersperse uh, this uh, talk with job ads just to remind you every now and again that I need a job. <laughs> Ackles. What are Ackles? Um, I'm guessing some of you don't know what are Ackles. If anybody has, has any questions or actually finds what I'm talking about something like the, the far too low, low level of detail or too boring, just yell out and I'll, I'll adjust. I have more material here than I can possibly talk to. So, um, you know, any kind of guidance from the audience I appreciate. So an Ackle is an ac is a access control list. It's a fairly generic um, concept where you, instead of having simple permissions on something to say, this one user can do things. You say, here's a list of users who can do this, here's a list of groups who can do that, that kind of stuff. And an example here is all the people in accounts can read the file and the auditors can read the file, Fred can write it, and nobody else can read it or write it. And this is the kind of thing that's kind of hard to do in a, in a reasonably generic fashion today in the POSIX model. Um, so let me talk about access models. And this is background for the rest of the talk. Um, an access model, in a very generic and theoretical sense, uh, you have a subject that performs actions, an object on which actions are performed. This is your standard um, grammatical definition of the words. Um, and you have a definition of a format for subject credentials, which is how you know that the subject is who the subject is. And likewise for object permissions, which is how you know what can be done. And a set of actions the subject might be able to perform in an algorithm that maps all together and tells you whether or not that's actually allowed. Um, for file systems, more specifically, the subject is a process. Uh, in the case of NFS, that's a process that's actually running on a client. So this is a, a, something of a, um, a subtle connection. And an object is an inode or other kind of file system object, but typically files or directories. Subject credentials is usually something like an owner and some groups. Exactly how many groups varies. Um, Object permissions is things like an owner, an owning group, sometimes, uh, a POSIX mode, and or, or some kind of ACL. Uh, and actions are typically things like read, write, execute, delete, change owner. So the algorithm, um, in general, uh, might also use the some of the permissions on the parent directory, some information that's stuck on the parent directory. I'll mention that because it'll become important later. So here's four different access models of which um, you probably know at least one. Here's a picture of them. Um, so we have the traditional POSIX model, which is that tiny little uh, well-formed blue uh, piece of antiquary in the corner. We have draft POSIX ACLs, which is the same thing but extended. Then we have this large cancerous blob over here, which is Windows ACLs. And then we have this really sickly looking green thing which mostly overlaps with the cancerous blob, which is NFS v4 ACLs. Uh, you notice the large disconnect between the two pairs. Um, I drew this diagram because uh, you might otherwise, listening to things I say, think that there is some kind of connection between them. Um, but no, not really. So I'll talk about traditional POSIX. So pretty much everybody knows this. You have three bits access mask, read, write, and execute. You have three, uh, three classes of your users, uh, three classes of subjects, owner group and other. Uh, and that gives you nine bits. 
and you get some, some other wacky bits and that gives you a 12-bit mode field which every file and directory has. Um, and the owners of groups are identified by very simple things. They're UIDs which are just integers which are locally managed although you can uh, synchronize them between multiple machines. Um, it's all very old-fashioned. Again, the access algorithm is really obvious. Pretty much everybody knows it. Draft POSIX ACLs. This was uh, some set of draft extensions that uh, were supposed to go into POSIX that were never quite ratified, but implemented several times. Um, if you uh, Google for this stuff on the web, you will find the what could have been POSIX um, website that tells you about this. Uh, what it does is it takes most of the concepts of traditional POSIX and extends, extends the um, the model to allow a list of access control entries. So you still have UIDs, you still have the three-bit access mask, read, write, execute, um, and you still have three special classes which are uh, equivalent to owner, group, and other. They're called tagged. There are special tags on, on these entries, uh, ACL, user option, and so forth. Um, and you can also have additionally other entries. So you can say, um, the owner of this file can read it, uh, the group this file is in can read it, nobody else can read it, oh, but yes, Fred can read it too. Um, the interesting thing here is that the model only gives you additional accesses. There's no way of saying, yes, yes, everybody can read it, but, but not Jane. No, 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 not Jane. No, she can't read it. Um, it's all additional. And this has a number of implications. In particular, it means that the order of the entries doesn't matter because they're, they're, all, they're all just add up. Um, and uh, see, the access algorithm, it's, um, if you can work it out yourself. Windows ACLs, this is Microsoft's way of doing things. Um, and like everything Microsoft does, uh, it is its own complete self-consistent world that is completely different from anything we do in POSIX. Um, it has users and groups identified by things called SIDs, which are sort of like UIDs, except much larger, as you can see the example. Um, and they actually have a global scope. So if you understand a SID, you will see that in this enormous long string of CRUD, there is actually uh, enough information to tell you um, which company and which person it belongs to. So this thing here is roughly the equivalent of our UID. And this stuff down to here uh, it actually tells you a domain, and this stuff over here tells you um, that the rest of this stuff can be interpreted that way. So uh, this thing is a version, and this thing is a registry or something like that. Um, and these things identify both users and groups. Um, and you have an enormous set of access mask bits. Instead of just rewrite execute, you have uh, you have a read, you have a write, you have an append, which is different from write. Uh, you have read these kind of attributes and write those kind of attributes and small read kind of attributes and write kind of attributes and delete and delete a child uh, and read some more attributes and take ownership and synchronize and nobody's ever been uh, able to explain to me what the heck synchronize actually does. You can have a variable number of aces, and the limit here is there is a 64k size for the for the encoded um, result. Uh, each each entry has a SID, a type, which is basically allow or deny, some flags, and the access mask. There are three useful special classes, which are in Microsoft speak are called well-known SIDs. Uh, they are create owner, create a group, and everyone, which have a vague but not direct logical relationship with the uh, owner group and other classes in POSIX. Uh, I can expand on that if anybody actually wants to have their, their um, ears bleed. Um, there's a hand, there's a, okay, quite a large set of other well-known SIDs which are basically, as far as I can tell, uh, exactly the equivalent of our well-known groups like audio and video. So these are things like interactive network, dial-up, batch, all that kind of stuff. And uh, when you log into Windows, you get a bunch of these added to your, uh, your process, gets a bunch of these attached to it. Um, and there is a whole bunch of, you, you can have any other kind of SID in there, in the entry. Um, and the entry type is allowed or denied. And the, the fact that you've got 
the ability to deny access is, gives you an enormous amount of expressive power. This is actually almost the only thing I like about the Windows model is that you can uh, make exceptions. Um, that has a lot of interesting implications, in particular it means that the order of entries matters because now you can allow or deny, you can have additive and, and subtractive. And there's a whole bunch of flags which I'm going to skip right over because a lot of them are just <sighs> unfortunate. And a lot of them don't actually aren't actually using the kernel, they're actually just there to support user space stuff, which I'll mention later. So the Windows access algorithm is uh, grossly simplified. Loop through this entry, find an entry that matches you. Um, if the matching entry says allow, then you're allowed. If it says deny, then you're denied. And if there is no matching entry, then you're denied. Um, there's a to-do left in there. Uh, this algorithm is actually sufficiently complex and is that it's not possible to express it very cleanly. It's, um, but fundamentally, you walk through the entries in order and you find an entry. Um, NFS v4 ACLs. This is defined in the NFS v4 standards, um, all several of them. Uh, and what it more or less tries to do, if I can express this in a polite way, is take the Windows access model and make it usable over NFS. Without admitting that it's actually Windows, the RFCs don't use the word, actually I think the latest one might, but the original RFC very carefully avoided using the word Windows anyway. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think anybody attempted to implement what's in the standard before writing the RFC, or the second RFC, or the third RFC. Um, the architecture is very similar to Windows, it just differs in details, usually the details that make Windows work. Um, users and groups are identified by strings, which is different to all the other models. So the strings are of the form user at domain or group at domain. This is logically equivalent to Windows SIDS in that you've got both a user part and a domain part. But it's in a, it's in a form that you can pick apart and of course takes a whole lot more to parse and store. Um, and that's on the wire. So the systems at each end of an NFS v4 connection are supposed to map those things to whatever they feel like internally. You have the same access bit masks as Windows. Uh, exactly the same binary values, which is, I'm sure, not a coincidence. Um, the names and semantics are grossly similar, with some interesting exceptions. Um, and in the latest RFC, we actually have a bunch of other ones, uh, a pair of them, sorry, which have no equivalent of Windows at all. So I'm not quite sure what they're thinking there. Um, there are owner at, group at, and everyone at special classes. They're called who's in, um, in NFS v4 speak, which is a, a wonderful way of confusing people. Um, and these are nearly identical to Windows, except that the first two are actually much closer to the POSIX implementation, or POSIX semantics of them. Um, there are several unhelpful special classes which came from Windows, which really shouldn't have been made special classes at all. Um, and there's a variable number of other entries. And again, this is more or less exactly the Windows model. You have uh, a whole bunch of flags and an allow or deny type. And uh, eventually they realize that they forgot to add the per echo flags. And in the very most recent uh, RFC, you've got those, which required some juggling in the RFC. And as we've come to the end of that section, here's another job ad. Now let's talk about why anybody would want to have NFS v4 ACLs. And it's a valid question because there's, as you can tell from my incredibly high level overview of what they are, they're quite complex. Well, there are t two main reasons. Firstly, you have the expressibility and finer grain access control, which are technical advantages of the actual ACL model. Uh, the, ex the deny type ACE means you can, you can express things like everybody in accounts except Torjan can read this, this file or write that file or something. Um, if you have the need to do that, that's something that is really, really hard to do without this feature. Um, you have, in theory, finer grained access control. Uh, so you have all those, you have 14 
different access rights you can you can grant or, or, or revoke individually. But the trouble is that a lot of these access rights really don't make that much sense in a POSIX context. Um, and uh, if you read one of the references at the end of here, there is a mapping between what NFS v4 specifies for access rights and what you can actually implement in POSIX that Andreas Grunbacher worked out. And um, about half of them make sense. So uh, the, uh, the the find grain access control is n not quite completely illusional, but it's it's halfway there. Um, and judging by the programming ex examples you see in Windows uh, and the examples that's in the documentation uh, and the default stuff that happens when you use the GUI ACL editor, uh, most ACLs are in the uh, ha you use really only two different types. Um, of masks. The one that has all bits on and the one that has read only. Um, because most Windows administrators, judging by the examples, uh, don't really have a need or can't tell the difference between all the wonderful things. And the mapping between the access rights and what you need to do to and, and, and which access right is used in which circumstance is actually not all that clear from the Microsoft documentation. We had a guy, when we were doing this work, uh, run some experiments and the Microsoft documentation differs from reality in a number of minor minor cases which is just enough to make it really hard as a Windows person to do anything other than follow the examples and give people full control. So I would question the real world usefulness of finer grain access control. However, if you have a NAS file system and you are sharing that by um, Samba and NFS, and has been used by both POSIX and Windows clients, then you need something very much like this. You need it because you want your files to have their access controlled from your rich uh, Windows model, so that your, your system admin can decide how those files are controlled there, and then have the people who are running the Linux clients not be able to completely circumvent those access controls by simply using a different protocol. Um, and that's the real reason and that's why we were involved in this at all. Disadvantages. It's a lot more uh, complex than traditional POSIX. Um, maybe I should uh, uh, explain on that. Um, Traditional POSIX is actually a lot more complex than it seems. There are a lot of interesting little corners like capabilities and the sticky bit and things like that that actually make traditional POSIX a lot more complex than I went on earlier. It's not just those 12 bits. Um, but on the other hand, it's fairly well known. Um, and this thing is a lot more complex and in terms of the data structures, in terms of storage of them, it has things like the, the, the ability to deny um, uh, the, the deny type aces, and all this uh, complicates the algorithms and it means that we could be, have more bugs, frankly. Um, there's this thing called inheritance, which can be subtle and unobvious. It can also be extremely powerful and it's potentially a reason to, if you want to use this. The order of aces is significant and this can confuse people, especially anybody who's had any um, contact at all with POSIX hackles. Uh, and there are some other interesting mapping issues like the everyone at who is not the same thing as the POSIX other class. In particular, everyone includes everyone, whereas POSIX other actually means the people who didn't match the other classes. So um, again, for people used to POSIX, that can cause confusion. More disadvantages. Uh, in, a, in a POSIX implementation, you have to retain POSIX the mode on, on an inode for compatibility. So for example, you have a file with a particular mode and you set an ACL on it. Well, you can't have the mode give you less permissions than the ACL does. So you have to recalculate the mode to be an upper boundary on the permissions that the ACL grants you when you set the ACL. Conversely, and even more confusingly, when you have an ACL and somebody does a chmod, you have to futz with the ACL to get a new ACL that doesn't grant you too much permissions. Um, and some clever people have worked out ways to do this stuff in uh, not perfect but reasonable ways. 
Uh, and the trouble is, you need some extra state. You need three extra 32-bit ints. And that state, there is no way to ship it across NFSv4 at the moment. There is a proposed draft for how to do that, but nobody's implemented it. Um, another problem is that the NFSv4 standard is just downright balked. Um, there are vague descriptions of access rights. Uh, there is a number of corner cases that um, weren't really very well thought out. Um, they forgot to include stuff. They added stuff that didn't need to be there. Uh, and the result is that while NFS v4 ACLs have been implemented several times, nobody has implemented exactly what's in the standard because you basically can't. Uh, well said, the X400 are file systems. Um, and there are some interesting um, issues that you have with current POSIX systems, like uh, you can't, there's no API to do an atomic create with an, with an extended attribute, um, which now that you have extended attributes having significant um, security uh, impact uh, means that you potentially have interesting races where you can have clients look at things at the wrong time and um, th there's a whole bunch of really gnarly um, implementation issues like that. I love this word rich. Uh, it, it's used here in the, in the RFC. It says the NFS v4 food version 4 ACL model is quite rich. Uh, Taken in context, I think they were making it, uh, using it as a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, rich fruitcakes taste good. <laughs> so <coughs> there's another meaning of rich. Um, if you've ever dealt with Microsoft and rich text or rich this model or rich that model, you realize that rich just basically means too complex. Um, and when they translated this stuff into the NFS world, I mean, to be entirely fair to the Windows folk, they have a model that works well in their context. Um, the translation and the shoveling down into a mostly POSIX style protocol, plus the changes they made while doing that, mean that the result is, is I would argue, slightly worse than either of the two originals. Um, and if the page down key works, Okay. So, who implements these things? Um, Z or ZFS from Sun. GPFS, I believe, uses it, um, at least according to their documentation they do. Uh, the Linux NFS server and client kind of, sort of, maybe, but not really quite do it. And let me expand on that. The current NFS server code in Linux assumes that the underlying file system does POSIX ACLs. Um, and you may remember the significant differences between the POSIX ACL and the NFSv4 ACL model before. Now, what happens here is that when, you, when a client sets an ACL over the wire, the server decides to convert that ACL into something that it can use internally to, to give to the file system to set it. And in the inverse case, when, when getting an ACL, and uh, that conversion is in general lossy, and if you try to run it in a circle where you set and get an ACL, really unpleasant and interesting things happen. Um, I believe that Samba does a, a very similar amount of conversion in user space, um, quite possibly better. Um, <laughs> it is, yes, richer, yes. Um, the client presents ACLs to user space on running on the client in an unexpected manner. Uh, there is a, an extended attribute that, and it is formatted, <laughs> may the good Lord help us, as the on the wire binary format that goes across the wire when you set the thing. Because this is really easy to do in the client. Um, on, on the other hand, uh, it means that you need special utilities to do anything to that, and those utilities are not what anybody would do to um, change the same ACLs on the server. So if you have an ACL based um, server, if you want to change a particular um, ACL by logging into the server and doing something, you've got to learn a completely different syntax than the one that you would use on a client. And of course, uh, this extended attribute creates problems with the copy and tar. If anybody's ever tried to do this, you'll see how gnarly it gets really quickly. Um, so again, why care? ACLs are more expressive, and the real reason, you have a mixed Windows Linux environment.
another brief ad from our sponsor. So let's talk about the actual project. Way back in LCA 2007, Andreas stood up and talked about his work in this field and it got us all really, really excited and we started talking to him. Uh, and we actually started working just after L the last LCA in 2008. Um, so our, our project milestones are LCAs basically. Uh, the goal was to develop a native NFS v4 ACL support for Linux XFS NFS server and client and ship all of that and Samba uh, in SGI's NAS server product. So the, the whole point here was to get a NAS server product that uh, didn't allow people on NFS to circumvent Samba ACLs. And it's a cross-team effort. Um, this is a description of the various people who worked on things, uh, including Andreas, who uh, very, very nicely um, collaborated with us. Um, incidentally, all the SGI people there are also looking for jobs. <laughs> so if you want to hire some clever people. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> well, you could have got the set, <laughs> I think. Um, so uh, here's what we changed visually. Um, the green bits is code that we needed to futz with. So there's a command line utility that runs in user space. Um, when you have just, just a system here and we needed some VFS changes and some XFS and EXT3 changes. Applications, not changed. This is actually important. Uh, this is an important design goal. The application does not need to know that it is doing anything special with NFS v4 ACLs. It does, if it's an old fashioned POSIX application, it does its chmods and its stats and whatever. If it's a smart application, you can link against the library that this thing uses and actually change ACLs itself. Um, when your machine is a NFS server and you have an NFS client, uh, you need some changes on the client. So you have the, same, the exact same binary command line utility running over here doing the exact same interface down into the system calls and you have some code in the NFS client that makes that work and uh, makes the appropriate protocol across the wire do the right thing. And some changes were needed to the NFS server. Oops. Using SIFs, um, all the same stuff here. Zero changes on the client, uh, which is a good thing because these are mostly Windows boxes. Uh, and there was a small amount of work needed to, to uh, live in Samba. It's a new VFS module that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, to enable the clients doing gets and sets of ACLs across here to actually talk down to here like this properly. Some more detail on the project scope. Um, VFS needed uh, a file, some work to allow a file system to have more control over how access checks work. Um, there is a API that lives in the kernel that lets you futz with the infrastructure, so it has like data structures for storing ACLs and so forth. Uh, there was work for both of the two file, syst uh, file systems that we worked with, the XT3 and XFS, to allow them to store and enforce ACLs. Um, the NFS server needed to make uh, ACLs get and set work and some other things I'll mention. And the NFS client needed to behave out to its user space in the way that that user space had every right to expect. In user space there is another API which is actually almost identical except for a few things missing but a different set of code. Uh, Samba needed some work as I mentioned. There was a command line utility and there were some tests. And of course we needed to do configuring packages for the NAS server guess which bit we didn't do. VFS changes um, for the kernel hackers in the audience. Uh, we have two new inode operations that we added. There's a may delete and a may create which are null by default and if they're null by default then the existing code runs. Uh, the, they allow a file system to hook into the access check that happens in the VFS when a process wishes to delete a file or create a new file or directory. I'm sorry, that's also a deleted directory as well. Um, you 
I think we could argue for most of the day about how this stuff was done. <laughs> um, there were some constraints on the design. One of the constraints is we had to somehow get this stuff to work in a, in a, as a it, not only in what's top of tree then, but also in a rather an, more antique kernel that lives in SLS 10. Um, and there was also a desire to do minimal changes. And um, we ended up with something that, uh, okay, it's bad ugly, but it does work. Um, there is a new super block flag, MS with a pend. Uh, what that does is uh, it allows the file system to declare to the VFS that when the VFS calls the permission inode operation, that it may have a fourth flag. There is a may read, may write, may execute constants that get passed down. And things go really badly wrong in the, fo in the existing file system implementations if you pass down any other flags. Um, so uh, we have to have our new advanced, smarter uh, file systems tell the VFS that it's allowed to pass down may append. May append is needed in order to um, detect a number of different cases to uh, implement the, some of those finer grant controls. And surprisingly, that was all that we needed. Although we could, of course, spent an enormous amount of time changing the way things worked. We just did some minor things. Um, there's an end kernel API, uh, which is optional. You can, there's a config the, uh, variable that controls it. It's f infrastructure that all file systems can share. So unlike some of the existing NFS v4 ACL code, it's not in the NFSD directory. Um, and uh, it does, has a whole bunch of extra things that the old NFS ACL code didn't do. So for example, it has uh, all those things the old code did. It has an access check algorithm. So this is the library call that all the file systems call when they actually uh, run their permission thing. Um, there is uh, functions that provide all the weirdness that is necessary when you do a chmod or, or change an ACL and dealing with modifying the other one. Uh, there is the stuff that deals with inheritance. Uh, when you create a new file, there is uh, a defined set of algorithms for defining what the default ACL for that guy is uh, derived from the parent directory's default ACL. Um, sorry, the, sorry, the parent directory's ACL. Um, that's implemented in here. And the code that encodes and decodes these into the binary encoding that goes out in extended attributes is in the library as well. So it's, th it's done exactly the same for every file system. EXT3, um, there's a new config option that enables the new code. There is an existing ACL mount option, which currently is a Boolean that says if it's off, then there are no ACLs. If it's on, then you uh, have POSIX ACLs. And now it has a third value, uh, NFS v4, or NFS4. Uh, there is a new X atra, it's called system.nfs4 ACL. Um, and there is uh, some work to cache a parsed in-core ACL, which can be very quickly evaluated for access check uh, on the in-core inode, and to save that out to ext3, uh, to the on-disk format when necessary. Um, there are new permissions checks. Uh, it provides the may create and may delete um, operations. Uh, and it all, there are also changes to permission and set atra. Uh, the set atra changes are but ugly. Um, in fact, what happened was we ended up copying and pasting the entire inode change OK code into XFS, into sorry exe3 and then changing it around a little bit, um, which I, I really don't like. But um, that's what happened. Uh, and the Chmod handling in setatra is also changed to call the library to say, oh, I've got a Chmod and I've got an ACL. Oh, it's too hard. Let you do it. Um, and initializing new ACLs. XFS, more or less exactly the same things, except, of course, because XFS is XFS, they're more complex. Um, in particular, the exact same user, user space interface of the xatra, the same name and the same format as ext3. Uh, again, there's a config option. Uh, unlike ext3, where uh, there was a mount option, this is actually a super, bl uh, super bit, <coughs> super block bit. Um, and at the moment, the only way to set that is to make the file system. 
yay. Um, and of course there are lots of XFS specific complications and some real problems with um, uh, so how the way some of that stuff works that we mostly worked around. Uh, let me see. NFS server changes. Does anybody um, want to see some examples of using ACLs in the few minutes we have remaining? Okay. Uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I have extra slides here at the end just in case people ask gnarly questions. Okay. I should actually show you the project status page. Um, the patches and code are all available. There's a project website that I'll mention the URL for a little later. They're all up there as of last week. Um, but the project itself is on, shall we say, indefinite hold. Um, so somebody's going to have to do all this future work stuff that I've listed here. They're on oss.sgi.com, which is, the answer is sort of. Yeah, there, there are, um, on the project website, it shows you all the good trees. There's actually several. Yeah, that's why I built patches and stuck them on tarballs on the, on the website. Um, I love Open Office. I love Open Office so much. Yes, thank you for that. Um, okay. Now, let me show you some actual examples of how this works in practice. Uh, I'll rephrase that. Let me show you some canned examples of how this would work in practice if the universe were really nice. Um, so, I love OpenOffice. <laughs> you double click and it scrolls in between the first click and the second click because that's a good idea. Like that. <laughs> okay. So if you install it, you basically got to download a whole bunch of patches, including kernel patches, Samba patches. You build all these things, you install it. If you have XFS, you have to build a new file system. Otherwise, you can take your very, very scratch file system and add um, NFS v4 uh, ACL mount option if you're ext3. Then you restart bits, and then off you go. Um, I'll just show you an example. If you get an ACL um, on a file, there's a file. Um, there's its POSIX mode. Notice that you still have a POSIX mode. Um, and there's this command line utility NFS4 ACL and you minus minus get. And it shows you this is the file name and these are the ACLs. There are three ACES in this ACL. The owner at, group at and everyone at. Um, and these more or less express uh, exactly what this thing here is. Just to show you a really nice obvious uh, comparison. There is a um, a read and a write bit, and a read and a write bit, and a read bit. This is, of course, not exactly the same, but these are not sensible. They're all just allow. Okay, so then if you want to set one, here's the rough equivalent of doing a Chmod 664. Um, so again, you have the same ACL, and you just do NFS ACL, and it's for, for ACL minus minus set, and these entries are just separated by white space with. Um, uh, if you want to remove an ACL, there's a minus minus remove. Uh, now the example I quoted right at the start, all the people in accounts can read the file. Um, all the people in accounts, this is a group called accounts, can, can read the file. Uh, all the auditors in the group, people in group auditors can read the file. Fred can write the file, and because there's no everyone at entry, nobody else gets any other rights. An example of fine-grain access control. 
uh, a directory where Fred can create files but not directories and where Jane can create directories but not files. Don't ask me why you would want to do that, but it's an example. Uh, so in this case we actually have uh, an explanation of why you would need a W and an A, the write and append bits. So the write bit actually controls the ability to create a file in a directory when it's set on a directory and the append bit uh, controls the ability to create a subdirectory. So the pair of them together uh, are equivalent to the POSIX W bit. So, uh, okay. That's the, uh, the website. Do we have any questions? Is it possible to set both POSIX and NFS v4 ACLs at the same time? Uh, no. <laughs> the code prevents that. Uh, your sanity would be grateful for the code preventing that. Um, although it's interesting that some other implementers have chosen to, to do it differently. I believe, for example, that with uh, GPFS you get to choose on a per file basis which of those it has. Uh, Tridge? Yes. Is, um, the last Apple that was written, uh -huh. really the, the style Apple or the NFSB4 or, you know, or whatever, mm -hmm. is the one that's stored. Yep. When anyone tries to read an Apple, you get a translation from the one that's stored. So if you, you last stored an NFSB4 and you ask for a POSIX, you get a map of NFSB4 POSIX. If you last uh -huh. stored a POSIX and you read an NFSB4, you get a mapping from it. Well, oh, that's a rough approximation of what the code actually does, except that the, the mappings aren't quite all that obvious. So in particular, doing a chmod does some interesting yeah, things. Like yes. Uh, <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Um, yes? Yes. You mean the same lowercase uh, bits in the mask? No, I mean the same attribute on the files. That is, why are you trying to translate between them? Oh, 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 no, no, we're not using the same attributes. Uh, the, uh, the ACLs are stored separately. The mode is stored separately. They both exist on the file system on disk at the same time. When you change either, um, you, the code does things to make sure that the two are roughly consistent. So, if I have a POSIX ACL. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I was thinking POSIX mode, my bad. Uh, POSIX ACL, uh, let me see. The two file systems we worked on behave differently. Yes. X of S and XT3, they, they did different logic. The, the whole idea of, uh, but basically we considered in our design that the whole idea of combining on the same file system the two ACL models was a corner case that we really didn't want to be involved in. In particular, uh, the Windows model, sorry, I'm sorry, the NFS v4 model, uh, does things with inheritance. So uh, if you have a directory which doesn't have an ACL and you create files in it and then do other things and all kinds of interesting stuff happens. It's, it's just easy to have the whole file system do one model or the other. Uh, but you can in ext 3 mount that same file system without ACLs enabled. Still stored but not enabled. Just not enforced and, and not read. In which case you have all your POSIX stuff and exact, so all your POSIX traditional stuff and exactly that. And you can then go and change the, mo the mod, the, the, the mode, and it is then inconsistent again. But don't do that, please. <laughs> yes? Have uh, any any success getting this working on other Ah. Um, no. Uh, did I mention the project status? <laughs> And uh, yes, we got to that project status, you know, the one with the tombstone, before the Seathon came along. <laughs> so uh, it, p one question I was expecting was, would this work together with things like SE Linux? Um, and again, that's something that we intended for it to be possible, uh, but never got around to testing. Yes? Uh, 
restored to some other uh, file system. I mean, uh, it would be nice to have these uh, uh, ACLs make sense on a, a non-NFS uh, system too. Yes, uh, that was one of the reasons the, the whole uh, back up your NFS file system then restore it on, on XFS kind of scenario that we deliberately chose to have the format that's exposed to user space of how the ACL is represented be identical on all of those file systems. Just precisely so you had that option. That's the, the problem that you don't, you, the ability you don't have now. Any other questions? Yes. Ask Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you very much.